So just doing some um, live training on the correct legal entity, the information um, that I'm going to give is, is correct up to today's date as the, the rules of the civil procedure rules do change occasionally. Um, there are different types of various legal entity in England and Wales and it's very important that you get the legal entity right, as if you get it wrong, um, you will have wasted time and costs and may also find yourself having to pay costs to the other party. So um, we'll, we'll get straight into it. What are the common types of legal entity? Um, there are um, individuals, of course, and that includes individuals carrying on business in their name and they're typically named um, called sole traders there's partnerships there's private and public companies limited liability partnerships and community interest companies and there's also unincorporated businesses companies and associations and each legal entity has their own identity. So, like I said, it's very important you get the identity right. Otherwise, you could find yourself suing the wrong person or wrong identity. So, simple examples of individuals, obviously John Smith, Joe Bloggs, me, Philip Nam. They're, they're pretty much self-explanatory. They are individual human beings. But you can get individuals who have their own businesses. Uh, for example, when I started um, um, White Collar Legal, I didn't have a limited company. I was trading as White Collar Legal. Uh, you've also got an example of, of someone called Lewis Davis, random name. Trainers LPD services. You you, you get um, sole traders quite common with garages, plumbers, people doing hands on work. But you can also get big companies or you know big businesses being sole traders. I've got a video um, on YouTube. I'm not sure you've seen this advert. It's an advert for Simply Business. Selling insurance. Uh, you've got all these people who have their own businesses. And uh, I'm going to assume they're all sole traders. Uh, I'll tell you why I'm going to assume that. Because a, a company uh, will have um, confirmation of their company status in the name. I'll explain that a bit, bit later. So this this could be Mr. and Mrs. Smith training as pain in the glass. Um, the, these these could be the, the Alley Brothers tra training as get stuffed. I'm obviously just making up these names. Um, this this could be um, I don't know Bre Brenda Smith training as curl up and die. Uh, and this this guy is uh, Paul Jones trained as rough around the ed hedges. There's, 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 there could be hedge. Um, so they're, they're examples of, of potentially um, sole traders. Um, some examples of partnerships. You won't know their partnerships at all because the, their name may not uh, identify if they're a partnership or not. Well, you know. You'll you'll see names the Smith and Jones partnership. Well, they're obviously partners, Mister or Mrs Smith and Mister and Mrs Jones. They, they might be partners in a business, but you can also get uh, partnerships typically in solicitor firms. Um, Benson and Co solicitors is another name that could be a partnership, but you won't actually know uh, they are a partnership 
uh, just by the name. You'll certainly probably find out if they write to you or, or they state on their letter, this is a partnership and it'll name the partners. Um, companies and limited liability partnerships, community interest companies, these can all be found on Companies House. Um, it is a there's a database of, of companies and uh, limited liability partnerships on Companies House, which you can find online. It's a public database. And you can get information on all, all types of different companies on the register of, of Companies House. Companies will probably have the word limited at the end of their name. That can either be abbreviated with LTD or the actual word limited. So the, the example LPD services limited, um, but the, you know, it could be many different types of companies um let's just put a random name britannia limited the full word limited at the end that was well that could be uh, you can identify that as a company a limited company you've also got limited liability partnerships still have the letters llp at the end these are also found on company's house For example, DWF, um, they're a big solicitors firm. And they've got two different types of entity listed on company sales. They've got DWF LLP, which is a limited liability partnership, and a DWF Solicitors Limited, which is a limited company. So if you're engaging DWF solicitors and want to sue them, you need to make sure you're suing the right legal entity. Who is the company? that has provided the services to you or who's the company that owes you money. Like I said, it's very important to get it right. And community interest companies, um, they're, they're essentially not-for-profit companies. They'll have either community interest company at the end or CIC at the end. So uh, some examples, let's just search for some. For example, community interest care, CIC. Um, some have this, the dots in between. And uh, there are others. You can see on this page, uh, there's, if I just search for community interest companies, some which are limited companies rather than CICs. As you can see uh, by these two there. Like I said, it's very important to get it right. And the final one that we've uh, mentioned is unincorporated businesses, companies, or associations. You also, you also get charities. In these in these types of entity, you'll get trustees who look after the organisation. For example, your local sports and social club um, could be an unincorporated association. Your local football club or sports club um, can can also be unincorporated. But in terms of some most charities, um, there is a register of charities that you can also search for the correct name. And you can see all these charities don't have the word limited on there. Well, that, that, some of those do, um, but most of them do not. So these are unincorporated uh, companies or associations or charities. So the reason why you need to get the name right is because, uh, well, let, let's look at the court rules. 
Um, these are the, the rules found in practice direction 16. Right, paragraph 2.4. Right, the claim form must be headed with the title of the proceedings, including the full name of each party where it is known. And it gives examples. Um, an individual needs to state their full name and title. Uh, individuals, if they are carrying on uh, an illegal business, should state their name and the words trading as or T slash AS and their name the business. And if the example given in the in the practice directions, Jane Smith trading as JS Autos. Uh, and the other examples I gave earlier were like the ones in the video or Lewis Davis trading as LPD services. Uh, if it's a partnership that you're suing, which is not a limited liability partnership, you can either state the name, names of the partners or you state the name of the company, but the partnership company. For example, earlier on, we used Smith & Jones Partnership. So instead of listing all the partners, which there can be obviously more than two, uh, there can be many partners, you just list, list the name. And you put in, in quotation marks after the end of the name a firm. And you can also sue partners as individuals as well. And the practice direction goes on to state with the companies or limited liability par partnerships, you need to state their full registered, registered name, including the letters at the end of their name, whether it's PLC, Limited, LLP. And like I said, you can get the full registered name on the company's house database. And if it's for any other company that's not listed, um, then obviously the full name by what it's known as. So if you're suing a local sports and social club, then that's the name you put down on, on the claim form. And this obviously applies to uh, letters of claim, because if you address it to the wrong company, you send it to the wrong company or legal entity, then either you won't get a response or you get something to say, well, it's not to do with us. So let's have a quick look at the differences between limited company and sole trader. We've got Lewis Davis trading as LPD Services, but we've also got a company called LPD Services Limited. Uh, and according to the company's register, it's Mario Baradas, who's the director of the company. He's the sole director. Now, there's nothing stopping Lewis Davis from operating as LPD Services. Unless LPD Services Limited want to try and sue the copyright and, and stop them using the name. But if Lewis Davis is a plumber, for example, or whatever sort of handyman he might be, he can advertise himself on social media and whatever as LPD services, but he's an individual. So if he does something wrong in that job, then the customer would sue Lewis Davis trained as LPD services. He wouldn't sue the LPD services limited because that's a separate entity. And like I said, when I set up my company, you know, if I did something wrong before 2013, people would have to sue me personally. Um, where if I did something wrong now, um, they'd sue the company. So that's that's the differences. The main difference is limited company and sole trader. So like I said at the start, it's very important to get the name right and identify who you're actually suing. And you can find out who you're suing by documentation because in, in in most in limited companies limited liability partnerships um and the like they are required to set out on their letterheads on their invoices they are a limited company they are required to set out their company number name address uh etc where individuals are not required to do that so if you get 
someone who's just an invoice to you and they haven't stated their company information, you can sometimes assume they are a sole trader. Um, so that's really to identify, or that's, that's ways to identify the correct legal entity and make sure you get it right. And that, that's live trading and um, on the correct legal entity.